So let's begin a complete guide to the first 10 minutes that makes Princess Mononoke 10 times more fun. This is the title scene of Princess Mononoke. As you can see, a huge text that says Princess Mononoke comes out on a screen, and you can see the patterns drawn in the back of it, right? This is a clay mask. It's a type of mask which has been excavated from a ruin of Jomon period and worn by its people, a mask made by burning its surface. These are the pictures and you can find these images on Google. If you look in the back of the title scene, you can see these patterns. Even the storyboard says, these are patterns painted on a clay mask in red-orange, but you can't really tell what it is by glance, can you? So I got rid of the text Princess Mononoke out of this image. No, this is it. Even so, you can't tell what's drawn here, so to make it more clear, how about I trace these lines? Can you see? So what's this? It's actually an image of a monster with one eye with a bunch of horns. What's drawn here is a pattern from Jomon period, but it's also an image of one-eyed monster with the head of the forest spirit attached onto it. You know how in the climax of Princess Mononoke, a god with the body of a deer and a face of a monkey called the forest spirit comes out. It's a drawing of one-eyed monster who is wearing its crown. This pattern was drawn in order to pass on the story of Ashitaka to future generations. Now, one eye stands for forging iron. In the past, people who lived in the mountains forged iron by mining for iron ore and iron sand and melting them. Because they stared at those burning forges with one eye closed, eventually all of them became blind. That's why there are many legends all over Japan which claim that there are one-eyed monsters living in mountains, and those legends usually originate from places where you could find mines. So think of it as a rule in Japan that blacksmiths are always one-eyed. And this picture represents a blacksmith who lost one eye. Meanwhile, it also represents that the person in the picture killed a god of the forest and received its horn. Princess Mononoke was a revenge match against Naushika of the Valley of the Wind, which Miyazaki didn't see as a complete success. Naushika of the Valley of the Wind was a fantasy, and Miyazaki took the same plot of that movie and made it into Princess Mononoke, but this time in more realistic approaches. So the two movies correspond with each other. For example, in the opening of Naushika of the Valley of the Wind, you can see a tapestry on the screen that has been depicted in the future when Naushika's life has already become a legend. Then real Naushika appears on the screen for the first time in the movie by overlapping with the tapestry. Just like that, the image of the first appearance of Ashitaka in Princess Mononoke overlaps with the image of Ashitaka's legend depicted on the clay mask. So the two movies introduce the main characters in the exact same manner. Well, it was a lot more obvious in Naushika because you see the tapestry of her and then real Naushika appears. But you know, since Miyazaki made Princess Mononoke thinking, oh, Naushika was a bit childish, that's why it's hard to tell these in Princess Mononoke. In Princess Mononoke, the story of Ashitaka gets passed on to the village of his hometown and remains as a design that honors the adventure of their prince. It means that Ashitaka stays in Iron Town after the story in the movie ends and takes over the the work in the Iron Town, so it's natural to think that one of his eyes eventually go blind. As a result, I assume that he is later called One-Eyed Ashitaka. The design of the climax means that One-Eyed Prince Ashitaka defeats the forest spirit and inherits its horn. But why is this message of the clay mask so hard to read? As many of you have guessed, it's all because of Toshio Suzuki, the producer of Ghibli. It's because Toshio Suzuki changed the title of the movie into Princess Mononoke. Miyazaki was thinking Ashitaka Seki as the movie title, not Princess Mononoke. The word Seki is a word made up by Miyazaki, which means legend. So the movie title was supposed to be like The Legend of Ashitaka. If this was the title, then people would have thought, oh, then Ashitaka is the main guy. But at one point, the title changed. It changed the impression of the viewers a great deal. And Miyazaki hated this idea, but Suzuki forced it by officially announcing it during Friday Roadshow.
The Legend of Ashitaka would have been an easier title for the audience to understand the movie better, but too bad, now it's called Princess Mononoke. So instead, Miyazaki left many cautionary notes by inserting scenes that were identical to Naoshika to tell us, hey guys, you know what these mean, don't misunderstand. But his guidance is too advanced for the average people like us to comprehend. And it's the same with this scene, Miyazaki must have been like, come on, everybody's gonna realize that this means Jomon culture, but of course we do not realize that. And because it's a clay mask, we can also think the story of Ashitaka was told to future generations by either the descendants of Kaya, a former fiancé who stayed in the Emishi village or the descendants of San. So this clay mask is trying to say something like, acknowledge the greatness of Ashitaka, the prince of our clan. Now, if I say, maybe the descendants of Kaya told these stories, those who know the movie well might say, wait a minute, Kaya has children? No way, she said she'd always love Ashitaka and no one else. Here's the thing, Kaya does have descendants, and actually the movie indicates it, except it's portrayed in a way we don't notice.